Okay, um, for a good number of years I worked on uh, training students uh, to apply palpation pressures with accuracy and consistency. Um, in 2000 I, did a, I wrote an article for the uh, Journal of Soft Tissue Manipulation about uh, pressure gradients. In 2009 um, I did an um, article for uh, Massage Therapy Canada, it's called Intelligent Touch. Um, and in 2010 I did a research study on determining whether massage therapists and massage therapy students can apply pressure accurately. Um, so what I've developed uh, is a system of using uh, palpation forces to, to, um, to, or palpation forces to give you an idea how much pressure you're applying to tissue. And I've used a weight scale, uh, basically a bathroom weight scale and mouse pads to do that. Um, the system goes from 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, and up, um, applied forces. So I'll just show you on the, on the scale here what I've, what I've been doing, what I've been teaching. One of the things I notice with students when they first start using palpation forces and learning how to gauge uh, how much pressure they're applying is that they often just use their hands. They don't use their bodies to apply the pressure. So the, uh, the force that I get them to use, or this, the tool, basically is the thumbs, fingers, and elbows. Primarily the thumbs and fingers because they're far more specific. Um, so what I, how I train the student is to look at the scale, go to zero to five pounds of pressure, feel that, and then five to ten and feel what that's like, and then ten to fifteen pounds of pressure and feel what that's like, and then fifteen to twenty, and then twenty to twenty-five. Um, and so there's also different thicknesses. There's, um, that's a medium thickness mouse pad. This is a much thicker mouse pad, so it feels very different. And the amount of pressure that you have to apply is different because there's, the, it spreads out, the, the force spreads itself as you apply pressure. So, and there's a very thin, very, um, a very thin mouse pad where it takes just a little bit of force to get the pressure you want because there's less tissue that's, that's moving outward. So what we've uh, done is um, developed a system of applying pressures uh, to help the student gain uh, consistency and accuracy. In the beginning, the student's consistency within, within themselves uh, develops very quickly. <clears throat> accuracy takes a much longer period of time. Between student and student, it takes time to, be, to develop uh, accuracy between student to student. So just to finish off uh, chatting about the uh, pressure system I've developed, it's in pounds of pressure, zero to five, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, and so on, of pounds of pressure. Um, I don't think in kilograms or grams, so the, that's just, they, you know, that concept works for me. Um, the other thing is it's the only quantitative, uh, only quantitative way I know to recall palpation pressures or palpation forces. And you can also use this in documentation. When you're documenting, when you're assessing somebody well, with palpation forces, you can document that in your, in your um, in your uh, clinical records. As well, you can document the amount of force that you're using to treating trigger points, uh, doing friction, doing fascia work, uh, doing uh, neuromuscular techniques. You can document the amount of force that you're applying uh, in areas with the client. So it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a good system in which you can use to help guide your treatment, guide your assessment, and, and use it for documentation as well. Okay, um, for a palpation assessment, you have to think about what you're really looking for. Um, and you, you're going to learn how to do landmarking of, of bones and ligaments and origin insertions and muscles. But when you're doing a, an assessment, a palpation assessment, um, in context to an orthopedic condition, you have to think about the structures that you think they're at, that are a problem or they're at fault. So if I think it's a trigger point or a muscle lesion such as tendonitis, tendinosis or a muscle strain, um, what I'm going to be doing is palpating the, the, muscle, uh, the muscles around the joint very specifically. So I may decide to start off with the posterior aspect, I'm going to palpate, and I'm going to think about palpation pressures that I'm, that I'm applying. I'm looking for temperature, tone, texture, tenderness, and that's the infraspinatus, supraspinatus, I'm going to palpate, and you need to have a, a good amount of pressure when palpating. That, is that comfortable? Mm -hmm. 
and that's the supraspinatus and the upper trapezius, squeeze in the upper trapezius, looking for, again, temperature, tone, texture, tenderness. And then I can come down here to the deltoid, posterior deltoid. Using my thumb, I'm using about five to 10 pounds of pressure on the lateral deltoid, anterior deltoid, palpating, again, looking for any muscle lesions, tenderness, tone, texture, and temperature. I can also palpate the SCM here. I can do some squeeze in the SCM. I can come in here and palpate the scalenes. If I choose to, I can do this in supine or prone position. Okay, so I can also palpate the insertion point of the supraspinatus, the greater tubercle. And a little bit lower, I can palpate the infraspinatus coming off the acromion process and coming down. I can also palpate the uh, long head of the bicep and the laminar in the um, bicipital groove. I can also palpate the subscapularis tendon on the lesser tubercle. Okay. So um, you can also pal palpate the um, short head of the bicep right in through here and the, cor the, acromion or the uh, coracoid process. So if you're looking for a muscle lesion, trigger points, um, you want to do a good palpation. If it's a joint problem, you're still going to do the same muscle structures, looking for the temperature, tone, tenderness, and so on. Um, if it's a joint problem, you're often going to have trigger points involved in this area. So when you're palpating, you're thinking about reproducing a referral pattern related to some of the symptoms a person's having. So to do a good palpation, um, you can also include ligaments in the area as well, if you think the ligaments have been damaged. Um, but you need to take in consideration um, all the structures or most of the structures related to the shoulder. I could also palpate the subscapularis by going underneath the scapula by laying her down. I could also do the lats, palpate the lats, the, the pecs, the pec major where it attaches on the lateral side of the uh, bicipital groove. So when you're assessing, do it in context to a, if it's orthopedic, do it in context to orthopedic assessment. Think about the structures that may be at fault, the structures that may be irritated, inflamed, uh, torn. Um, so that's what you need to do related to a palpation assessment, looking for structures that may be at fault.